integrals have many applications. And in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the applications to statistics. So one of the main concepts in statistics is that of a PDF or a probability density function, also sometimes called a probability mass function, depending on the type. But essentially, here's what this is. This as a concept is just the distribution of the possible values that that variable can take on. So if you're interested in looking at income, and if the various incomes in the world ranged, or at least in your data, ranged from like zero to one million, but most of them were between, let's say, zero and 100K, then the PDF, the probability density function of those incomes, might look something like this. And so what this, the output, the Y value is kind of saying, it's kind of talking about the frequency of that level of income. And so here, if we wanted to figure out what proportion of all incomes were less than 100,000, the way we would do it using integrals is we would take the integral of this function from 0 to 100,000, which would give us the area underneath that PDF function. This red PDF function is also instead just literally denoted f of x. That's a common way to denote it. And so the integral of that from this x value to this x value gives you then the percentage. It gives you a number between zero and one, and that's the proportion of all the data that falls between zero and 100k. So notice one implication here is that the total area from start to finish underneath the PDF has to equal one. And so that gives us to a sort of integral-based definition of this PDF, this important concept of how a variable is distributed. And that definition is this guy, that the integral of the PDF from A to B, where A is the lowest possible va value that variable can take on, and B is the highest possible value that variable can take on, that the area between that under underneath that PDF graph is equal to one. So that way, 100% of people have incomes between zero and a million. Uh, and so similarly, you could ask questions like, what percentage of people have an income between uh, you know, 30,000 30, and 50,000. So you just look between 30 and 50. And again, that area, that slice would give you that probability. And so it's divided, it's out of one, which is the total area underneath the PDF function. Uh, a really common distribution is what we call a normal distribution, where it's sort of symmetric like this. And so if you wanted to find the probability of being, let's say, between one standard deviation below the mean to one standard deviation above the mean, again, you would take the integral of that normal PDF from negative one to positive one. So again, the to and from are the beginning and ending x values, and that the resulting area underneath the curve gives you the proportion that falls within those values. So the next concept uh, is that of the mean. So the mean, you might know the formula for the mean, right? You add them up using sigma notation, sum of all the x's divided by n. And the grown up version of it is the sum of p of x, which is the probability of finding that x times x. And so this is also called the expected value. The expected value is adding up the probability of finding that x times that x. So for example, if this is a discrete distribution, like the number of classes students are taking, then that's like the probability of taking exactly one class times one, plus the probability of taking exactly two classes times two, plus the probability of three classes times three, and so on. But if you have a continuous variable like income, then the way to find the average or the mean is instead of this sigma notation, you have the integral. So you have the integral of, and instead of the probability, it's the PDF, and then times x. So long story short, if you take the integral of your PDF times x from beginning to the end, this gives you the average, x bar. So that's, so that's the formula for the mean using integrals for a continuous variable. It's the integral of x times the PDF from the beginning to the end, and that's uh, the continuous version of 
multiply the probability times the value and add them up across all possible values to get the average or the expected value. Similarly, you can also use integrals to talk about the median. The median in discrete numbers is you line them up and then you pick the middle one and that's the median. So the version of it with continuous data is if you have something like, let's say income and it's distributed like this, and you wanted to find the median income, essentially, think about it, median is talking about half of your data set. When we line them up and we pick the middle number, we're doing it so that half of the data is to the left of that. So here we know that the proportion of the data is always the area underneath the curve. So we want that proportion to be 50%. So if we picked like, bam, if, if this was the number where 50% of the data is here and the other 50% is here. So if this, this half had 50% and this half had 50%, then that's basically cutting your data into half. So what we're looking for in the median is that x, so that median then is that x value, this x value, which I'm going to call m. So it's that, that x value, that value of your variable, where the integral from the beginning, not till the end, but just to the median, underneath the PDF is equal to 50%, 0 0.5. So this is the definition of median, which again, I've written out here in green, this guy. So the definition of the median is the number where you have to go from A until that median to get exactly 50% area under the curve, meaning half of the data to the left of it and the other half to the right of it. Finally, there's this concept of the cumulative density function. The cumulative density function is essentially um, uh, sort of what it sounds like, cumulative. So it's not just talking about the probability of that value, like that income, but the probability of that income or lower. So essentially, the PDF, so if you have a PDF, then the CDF algebraically ends up being the integral of it. And so it's sort of like this. If you have the PDF here and the CDF here, as long as the PDF is positive, then the CDF is increasing. And note one thing about the PDF, I didn't say this earlier, but it has to be positive, which makes sense because you can't have a negative probability of a certain observation. So it has to be positive, which means, or it has to be zero. And so whenever it's positive, like if this is the PDF, if it's positive, then the CDF is increasing. And whenever it's zero, then this is flat. And ultimately, the area underneath the PDF, which we know is one, is the total amount that the CDF changes by. The CDF, long story short, always has to go from a low of zero to a high of one. Because, and so if this is looking at income, if you were to look at the CDF value of 100K, what that's gonna give you is that's the probability, let's say 90% of people have an income less than 100K, that's all the CDF is giving you. It's the probability of an income 100K or lower. So long story short, the formula for the CDF is this. It's that the integral of the PDF, it's literally just the integral of the PDF, but notice that that's ambiguous because there's that plus C that comes out when you take the integral. So it's specifically the integral where the starting value is zero and the ending value is one. That way, there's no probability of being less than the lowest value, but there's a 100% chance that you're less than the highest value. So this is just like the mathematical way to find the CDF of any function given the PDF. So let's do an example. An example here is let this PDF equal this, k times one minus x squared, uh, and the interval, the a and the b are, so again, another way to read this is that x is between zero and one, meaning the a and the b that you're going to is zero and one. And uh, the question is simply find k and then find the CDF. So first let's find k. So to find k, notice that one thing about the, the PDF, one of the defining features about any PDF is that the area has to be one, as we said, the area, the total area. So let's just write that out. So the, the integral from zero to one, because that's the beginning and the ending value, of that PDF, which is k times one minus x 
squared dx, this area has to equal 1. That's what makes it a PDF, as we said earlier, according to the definition. The area underneath the PDF has to equal 1. 100% of observations are underneath the curve. So we can just, so now this is a simple integration problem. We can just solve for k using this formula, using this integral. So first of all, how do we find the integral here? Here's where we could use u substitution if we wanted, where we could say u is 1 minus x. I would first pull this k out because it's a constant, and then using u equals 1 minus x, and du is just negative dx because the derivative of 1 minus x is just negative 1. So using that, this basically, we could take the k out, and this is the integral from 0 to 1 of, uh, you know, and then here you have, this is u, so u squared, then dx, where dx is just negative du, right? You could multiply negative 1 to both sides, so negative du. So really, I'm just going to put a negative here, and this is a du. So the integral of u squared, this is just the integral of u squared now, so it's negative k. The integral of u squared is u cubed over 3. And u, now we can just plug that back in, is 1 minus x. So finally, this ends up being negative k, and then 1 minus x cubed over 3. So this is the, first of all, this is the CDF. This is kind of already answering this question too. It's a CDF, but we also have a plus c. So now there's a couple of different ways to go about this. So here we already have the uh, the, the uh, CDF because we took the integral of it, right? But And now we could just plug in the fact that at the lower bound of 0, if we plug in 0 in for x, then this whole thing has to simplify to give us 0. And if we plug in 1, then it has to simplify to give us 1. Or we could finish what we were doing earlier, set this equal, set this guy equal to 1 and solve for k. But in either case, let me just write it out here what we would do. So here, keep the problem. So here we have that negative k one minus x cubed over three. plus c, this is what the CDF ended up being. And so, but before that, we had this integral had to equal one, right? So this is the area underneath the PDF from zero to one. Uh, and so from zero to one, this area needs to equal one. So to find this from zero to one, let's just plug in the one into this guy. So we get negative k one minus one cubed over three minus, and then we plug in negative k one minus zero cubed over three. So again, just to recap, this was the integral of, of this. And in that integral, we're trying to find the integral going from zero to one. So to do that, we gotta plug in zero and one as the bounds. First we plug in the one minus, then we plug in the zero. And that gives us the integral. And we're setting it equal to 1 because we know that it's a PDF. And to, it, to be a PDF, you have to have the area underneath you equal a total of 1. So here then, finally, uh, 1 minus 1 is 0. So this whole thing drops. And minusing a negative is like adding. So this is positive. So this is k. And then 1 minus 0 is 1. 1 cubed is still 1. So this, this whole thing is just k over 3 equals 1. So we end up getting that k equals 3. So now that we have that k is equal to 3, we can go back. And knowing that k is equal to 3, our answer here simplifies. And we can basically plug 3 in for our answer. 3 is what k was equal to. So now that we have that, our overall CDF, I'm just going to make more space here. So here we have that our integral, which was negative 3, 1 minus x cubed over 3 plus c should equal 1. 
when x is equal to 1. Because again, according to that CDF, when x, x goes from 0 to 1, then the beginning value has to equal 0, and the ending value has to equal 1. And so the ending value, when we plug in 1, it has to equal 1. So if we plug in 1 in for x, we get these three is canceled, so it's really negative 1 minus x cubed plus c is equal to 1, and specifically when x is equal to 1, this gives us negative 1 minus 1 cubed plus c equals 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so we get c equals 1. So our final answer here for the question, what is the CDF, is that our CDF is negative 1 minus x cubed plus 1. This function over here is the CDF. And notice we could verify, we could take the derivative of this, and we'd get the, um, the PDF, and we could plug in the endpoints, and we would get that it starts at 0 and ends at 1.